the movie is about a young woman who thinks she's marrying a perfect prince, but she's thrown into a pit where she becomes a sacrifice to appease a bloodthirsty dragon. Welcome to the Filmover channel. The story of the film in the Kingdom of Oria, the king and his knights ride through the hills towards a mountain where a dragon resides. They enter the cave intending to kill the dragon, but at that moment, the dragon attacks them and kills each of them separately, ultimately surrendering the king of Oria. 150 years later, in a land in the north, Floria and Elodi are cutting whatever wood they can find. They are the daughters of the local lord and are trying their best to help their people, who have come to the valley due to cold and hunger. More and more people are leaving the village every day, which means they may lose the village soon. When these girls return home, they notice royal figures. This lady offers Elodie to marry the royal prince, but Elodie initially refuses because she hasn't seen or known the prince. But her father tells Elodie that this place is disappearing and you can travel to the world and make your dreams come true. Finally, Elodie accepts and they travel south to see the prince. When they arrive at the palace, they are welcomed by the palace servants who say to them, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the kingdom of Oria. The royal family is in prayer, but word of your arrival has been conveyed. During this time, your rooms have been prepared. Elodi is amazed by the beauty of the palace and goes to the window to breathe in the fresh air, but then she notices a popular maiden in the opposite palace. At night, Elodi feels a bit stressed and starts painting. However, she hears a sound that leads her to look out the window, noticing that the lights in the room of the opposite palace are off, and a light is seen in the mountain. The next day, Elodi meets with the royal family, and the queen suggests Elodi should speak alone with my son Henry to get to know each other better. Then they go to the beautiful places of this city and get to know each other more. Finally, Elodi agrees, and tomorrow they start preparing for the wedding ceremony. Elodi's stepmother talks to the queen of this palace and says, Everything is just so exquisite. I thought we might become better acquainted, seeing as we're about to be family. But the queen tells her, your father was a rope maker, and now you've reached such heights. However, one mustn't forget one station, nor place undue import on what is ultimately a transaction born of necessity. Because your family needs money, my family needs a bride. What we don't need is more family. This lady becomes sad upon hearing these words and says to her stepdaughter, this wedding is a mistake. I don't trust them. They may be royalty, but that doesn't make them good people. Elodi asks, well, what does father think? This lady tells her, he refuses to talk about it. And when I try to tell him my worries, he snaps at me. At that moment, Elodie's father enters the room and tells the lady, tomorrow is a big day and these girls need their rest. Tomorrow, Elodie will wear her wedding dress, which is adorned with a knife and a beautiful candle. Eventually, they exchange rings, but a royal ceremony remains and Elodie heads towards the mountain with her prince However, when they reach the mountain, Elodi notices a group of masked individuals, among whom Henry's mother welcomes Elodi and explains that when our ancestors first came to this island, they realized they were not its only inhabitants. A creature, the last of its kind, dwelled here. The beast attacked the village, and the king gathered his soldiers to seek revenge. However, their weapons were ineffective against the creature, and each man met his end, except for one. For the king, a worse fate awaited. He had to sacrifice his beloved daughters to save the island. Three princesses met their end in the belly of the beast, and a kingdom was born. Therefore, we must also sacrifice, and the queen takes her son's hand. Then Elodie's, as they clasp each other's hands tightly to mix their blood. The queen declares, Elodie now has royal blood. She instructs Elodie to throw a coin into the cave below. Elodie, bewildered and troubled by the ceremony, throws the coin into the cave, completing the ritual. Henry embraces Elodie and softly says, forgive me, then throws Elodie into the cave. When Elodie regains consciousness, she realizes she's in a terrifying place. She shouts loudly and seeks help. This loud noise wakes up the dragon, who immediately starts chasing her. Elodie, who is furious, throws away her necklace and tries to climb up, but falls back down and becomes more despondent. In this situation, she notices ornaments and clothes that don't belong to her, meaning other girls had also fallen into the trap before her. Then she notices a light and immediately goes towards it. There, she notices birds ablaze. Elodie is astonished by this sight and asks, 
where am I and what's happening? In this situation, she hears the voice of a dragon that can speak. Elodie immediately hides behind a rock, but the dragon asks her, What's your name? She replies, My name is Elodie, but what do you want? The dragon says, I want what was promised. What must be paid? Every generation, your kind must pay. Your sense of royalty betrays you. It's in your blood. In this situation, Elodie flees immediately, and the dragon spews fire towards her. While fleeing, Elodie notices the body of a woman she had seen in the palace. Then she takes refuge in a small cave, but her clothes are too large, and in this situation, fire approaches her. With great effort, she manages to enter the cave, but her foot is burned by the fire. In this situation, she takes out her knife, tears her clothes, bandages her foot, and lights her candle to find a way out in the darkness, but she gets severely injured during the escape. In this situation, she notices insects that emit light, climbs up with the help of her knife, and reaches these insects, using them as a torch. Later, she notices water, but it tastes bad, so she uses the droplets of water falling from above. In this situation, the number of water droplets increases, and dragons enter. At this point, Elodie flees again and hides in another cave. In this situation, Elodie notices the clothes of other ladies who were sacrificed and killed in this cave, and their names were hacked above the walls, such as names like Victoria, Beatrice, Jenny, Fatima, and others. Elodie, who is very tired, rests for a while, but in her dream, she sees all the ladies who were killed here, but among them, Victoria was the one who found a way out. At this point, Elodie wakes up and notices her foot being bitten by these insects. She immediately removes these insects from her foot, but realizes that her foot wound has healed and no longer hurts, so she leaves this insect on her hand and sees that it heals the wound on her hand. Then she notices a map designed by Victoria. She memorized this map to find a way out. Afterwards, she reaches a place according to her map where sunlight can be seen. But this cave, which is upwards, is full of crystal blades and very dangerous. Then she notices Victoria's crown. She immediately tears her clothes and wraps them around her hands and feet so they won't be cut. She uses the golden crown to climb up. At this moment, the dragon notices her, causing Elodie's hand to shake and she falls down, but the dragon does keep its mouth open. Elodie manages to hold herself and climb back up. After much effort, she manages to reach the last point of the cave and get out of this deadly mountain, but she realizes that this is the tallest castle mountain and there is no way down from this mountain. She gets very upset and cries. In this situation, she notices several horses coming towards this mountain. Elodie shouts loudly towards them. At this point, the dragon attacks her and says to her, You have no escape. Elodie realizes that Victoria's body has been burnt in this place. Before the dragon burns this girl, a loud voice comes from the people outside the mountain, and she immediately follows them. Elodie realizes that this voice is from her father. He enters the cave and tells his people, Go find my daughter immediately. In this situation, Elodie immediately descends again, but at that moment, she realizes that three eggs of her last generation are broken. Philem refers to a scene from his past when the first king entered this cave, and the dragon's eggs were hatching. However, they ruthlessly killed these three hatchlings, and the large dragon attacked the people of this king, killing them all in a savage manner. But the king says to the dragon, Please forgive me, I am ready to give you anything. But the dragon tells him, Death is not enough for you, until you understand my pain. Currently, Elodie hears her father's voice, but remains silent, because the dragon locates them. The dragon attacks these people and kills each of them separately. Then he asks this person, Why have you come here? He answers, I am looking for my daughter, the dragon asks. So you are a father. Then call your daughter to come here, he asks. Is she alive? Then he says loudly to his daughter, We have made a terrible mistake. Forgive me. We put you in the worst conditions. My daughter, I am your father and I command you to escape and save yourself. The dragon gets angry and kills this person. At that moment, one of the hidden people hits his foot on a rock and makes noise. 
The dragon thinks Elodie might be there and immediately goes after her. Then Elodie sees her father and says goodbye to him for the last time. Then with the rescuer, who had fallen, she tries to lift herself up. In this situation, the dragon realizes that this is not Elodie, but an ordinary person, and Elodie is fleeing. The dragon kills this person and goes after Elodie, hurling fire towards her. But eventually, Elodie escapes from this mountain and flees atop her father's horse, but realizes that the dragon is following her. She immediately dismounts from the horse and hides under a hidden rock, while the dragon hurls fire at the horse. The dragon becomes furious and sets the entire sky on fire. The queen realizes that the girl has not been sacrificed and goes to solve this problem. The queen goes there and takes Elodie's sister, Floria, and injures her mother. At that moment, Elodie emerges from under the rock, thinking she has found salvation, but her mother arrives at the scene and tells her that they have taken her sister by force and intend to sacrifice her in her place. Elodie immediately follows them. Meanwhile, the queen grabs a knife and wounds the girl's hand, then injures her own hand to mix their blood together. She then throws the girl into the cave. When Elodie arrives, it is too late, and no one is there. She immediately enters the cave, but the dragon has taken Floria. Elodie uses her past experiences and sets up a misleading trap to attract the dragon's attention. Afterwards, Elodie grabs her father's sword and heads towards the dragon. At this moment, the dragon says to Floria, your sister has come because of you. At that moment, Elodie's diversionary trap creates a noise, and the dragon immediately moves towards it. Elodie quickly wakes up her sister to hide, but Floria's legs are broken and she cannot escape. The dragon quickly returns and realizes it's not Floria. Elodie tells the dragon, We are innocent. I know they killed your children, but we are not guilty. But the dragon doesn't believe and breathes fire towards her. The girl burns and falls into the water, and the dragon removes the sword from its mouth. Elodie emerges from the water, and her sister throws the sword towards her but the dragon catches her. Elodie wounds the dragon with a knife in its eyes, then takes up the sword and plunges it into the dragon's heart, saying to it, I'm not one of the royals. But the dragon grabs her with its hand and says, I can feel the blood of the royals in your body. Elodie cuts off the dragon's hand with the sword, and the final battle between them takes place. At that moment, Elodie uses her wits and notices the smoke reflection and tells the dragon, If you think I'm a royal, throw your fire at me. When the dragon throws the fire, it reflects back on itself, and the dragon falls to the ground. Elodie takes up the sword and says to the dragon, See this wound on my hand? My sister still suffers because royals mix their blood with ours. They deceived you, and you smell this blood. The dragon says, Then kill me because we have killed innocent people. But Elodie does not do this and treats the dragon with these insects so that the dragon can take revenge. At this time, a ceremony for the third marriage is taking place in the palace. Elodie enters and tells the lady, Escape with your family. She tells all the people inside the palace, For the last time, I tell you all to flee. But the queen says, You can't do anything. At that moment, the dragon comes and breathes fire towards the queen, Henry blaming himself for all what he did, and they all killed. And this palace is destroyed, and this dragon becomes Elodie's best friend. Well, that was a summary of the movie, Damsel 2024. Well, how was your enjoyment of the movie up to this point? If you enjoyed watching the video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. This action may seem simple to you, but it is very valuable to me. And now, I recommend the next video to you, which is 10 times better than this one.